Hi everyone, this is Alex and welcome to the review of the year about pictures, video, filmmakers or tools. What went on this year? So what happened this year in the video, photo and tools for all of us that can make your life easier actually? So it's a little bit of a year in review with comments. Let's review this 2020 difficult year. In January, Leica released the M10 monochrome. Well, it is a 40 megapixel black and white only. Fun fact, Chris from Chris and Jordan on DP Review TV actually really liked to use the camera. I bet he didn't bought it because it cost an arm and a leg. Oh, and by the way, if you knew that I'm talking about, there's a link in the description to one of your favorite YouTuber that reviewed or talked about it. Also in January, Nikon actually released the D780 DSLR. You know, that's the old technology that people might still like. There's more better news from Nikon later on. In February, Fujifilm actually released the X100V for those who like the nostalgia about having a camera that looks metal, uh, which is in metal actually. Also in February, Canon released the 1DX Mark III, also a DSLR. They'll probably release something big next year, right? With all those patents coming in. We'll have to wait 2021 for that. And there are some Olympics near. Also in February, that's pretty much when the snowball effect on events started to make events cancelled. Photokina, CP+, and all subsequent events actually were cancelled, except for WPPY, because it was in February. And, but after that, all the other events were cancelled. In March, Leica released the S3, a 64 megapixel monster, at 19 thousand dollars us fun fact i don't have a review on that one no one did <laughs> or if someone did let me know in the comments below in april panasonic made a firmware update to the sh1 which is pretty much jordan favorite camera if you go to uh, dp review tv and now you can record 5.9k ProRes RAW directly to the Ninja 5. They're great, Panasonic. Also in April, Canon released the Webcam Utility, a free software that you can download. And with your Canon gear and a lot of cameras, you can actually just use the USB cable, plug it into your computer, download that driver, and now you have a webcam, but with pro quality. And yeah, I made a video about it. You can check it out right here. In May, Avid Media Composer. Wait, what's that software? In case you don't know, let's just simplify by saying that it's a video editor and a software that Big Studio usually use. With the 2020.4 update, is now in 64 bit for Mac users. Welcome to 2020. Now, you're actually going to have to do that again because the M1 chip is out. <laughs> also in May, Nikon released the famously D6, another DSLR camera. It's more like a D5S, end quote, from Jared Paulin, who actually tested the camera. Check out the link in the description. Also in May, Shutterstock actually changed their pairing structures. Too long they didn't read? They're gonna give less money to people who upload pictures to them. Everyone was so happy. No, they, they were not happy. Of course not. Then again, this gives you kind of a sight in the future. What is it going to be in the future? The original post in their forum when I'm recording this video is now at 290 pages. Guess if those comments are positive or negative. Also in May, following the footsteps of Canon, Fujifilm has also now a webcam utility that can transform your Fujifilm camera into webcams. Speaking of Fujifilm, in May, they released the X-T4. And 
Well, there's a review by DP Review, of course. There's also Camera Conspiracy, who really like the camera. And fun fact, well, the camera is about dated every month or so. So the firmware is growing and it's getting better by the day, by the month. In June, after 84 years, Olympus quits the camera market. You will be for... <sighs> not really. Thanks for... Thanks for being... No, I'm not sure what to say. <laughs> let's do a minute of silence for the... No, let's go on. Also in June, Sony released the ZV-1, a vlogging camera for vloggers, which you can choose to show your product and it's gonna zoom on your product. Uh, there's a good review about uh, that uh, with uh, Tony and Chelsea Northup. Check it out. Now in July, AMD released their 30 series processor XT, which is basically the same of those of the last year, which are, for example, 3900X. Instead of X, it's XT. And they basically boosted the clock, so it's a tweaked version with the same silicon and competition is always a good thing for us. AMD does not have a foundry to actually build those processors compared to Intel, which they have their own foundry or printing machines. So they are printing those chips by TSMC, which is a foundry for processors. So just keep that in mind. We're gonna put it on the side here. Oh, we're gonna put it on the side here because there's more space. <laughs> And keep that in mind just for the rest of this video. Leica released the M10R, a 40 megapixel camera that cost a lot. 8K, 8300K, 8... Uh, I'm gonna put the price here, right here. And at the end of July, what happened? What happened? Canon released their R5 and R6 hybrid camera, which are mostly photography camera excellent photography cameras let's just say that they are hot literally speaking there's a film or a review about it by philip bloom link below when they were released with the version firmware 1.0 the heat dissipation technique was literally a timer that's the worst thing you can do so they did fix those problems or a lot of problems with the firmware update and i'm going to talk about that firmware update chronologically later on. Also in the same month, Canon actually released the C300 Cinema Camera Mark III and it's now Netflix approved. Review by Gerald Dunn. He likes it. He likes it. In July, Canon released two telephoto lens fix, the RF600 and RF800. F11, of course. These lens are so light with the R5 and R6, which you can actually track birds track animals it's a dream come true for those people who want something very very light compared to those huge lenses there's a nice review about that with tony and chelsea below in august it's nikon turn to release a webcam utility for the cameras and the, in august it was in beta but pretty much all those webcam utility now have the full version out also in august and after canon nikon Fujifilm, it's now Sony's turn to have a webcam utility. All it took is a little event and all those companies just gave us that for free. Thanks company, I think. At the end of August, Canon released finally 1.1 firmware for the R5 and R6 that really, really help with the overheating, especially when you're doing short clip for a long period of time. At the end of August, Roger Sikara actually took apart a Canon R5. And it's pretty well there that we could see that Canon does not really have any real world example or experience for dissipating heat. And we can clearly see that the processor is burning and cooking everything inside. It's not really cooking because the camera is stopping before the overheating, but they don't know how to spread that heat somewhere to the exterior. They do have experience with the cinema line, which has a fan and a hole, well, multiple holes for the fan, but they're not waterproof. And Roger Sikala also did another article on the different internal components 
and the heat of those components when using of course the R5. Fun fact, it's about 50 Celsius when he's scanning the uh, card reader, card writer actually, CF Express, and well those can go and the cards themselves can go about to 70 so that's another component that we need to think about when heating those guys so there's definitely something to be done what could be done well somebody actually did something and that's recent and he opened it up put a copper heat spreader a small fan very small fan and he can now record 8k as long as he wants hopefully canon will do better next time build in without the needs of a fan also at the end of august nikon released the z5 camera it's kind of a cheaper version so there's a review actually down below september was a busy month nvidia acquired arm the whole company for 40 buck mil billions 40 billions dollars and we're gonna keep that in mind right here think about that also in september gopro released the hero 9 black so for those who do not know this is an action cam you can i think goes underwater and everything in the rain of course with 5k 30p hyper smooth version 3 and more of course there are some funny bits by camera conspiracies in the links below it's kind of funny and sad at the same time i'm not sure if you got a bad copy of the machine also in september sony released the a7s3 is s is for small smaller supreme it's supreme so philip bloom made a movie about it it's four hour long and he's only talking about the camera I'm kidding, it's, it's an hour and a half. <laughs> At the end of September, NVIDIA released the 3000 RTX series video cards. These are video cards for high-end, mid-end, and a little bit for the low-end. If you are in the video industry, gaming, and on those cards, some parts are printed by Samsung, for example, the memory. But on those cards, also the chips, are printed by TSMC. So we're gonna put that here also and we're gonna add it to the pile of things we need to think about because those cards, you can't find them anywhere. In October, usually called Techtober, but since the situation of 2020, Techtober has been October and a couple of months later too. Camera Bits released Photo Mechanic Plus now with a dam digital asset management a little bit like lightroom photo mechanics itself has nothing to do with lightroom because it's fast <laughs> it's mostly used by photo journalists if they want to go fast of course also in october panasonic released their webcam utility after everyone thanks panasonic also in october red released the komodo 6k which is a tiny red camera strip out of everything and it's only basically a box with a sensor in it but at the same time you can actually put sd cards in it and so you don't have to buy the proprietary disc that red sells you can see actually a good impression from um, mkbhd and of course below and fun fact it's now Netflix approved, even if it's uh, still in beta, because it's a very new product, so Red wants to go gradually, but it's still Netflix approved. Also in October, Adobe released Lightroom Classic version 10 and Photoshop version 22. The good thing is that there are some new things in it. The bad part is that it's not faster. And by the way, we're gonna do some videos about the performance of Lightroom Classic. I kind of created a code to test the speed of it, and things are not really going great <laughs> so subscribe below and hit that bell icon if you want to get notified about that also in october there was adobe max it's usually their conference which is somewhere but now it was an all free event i don't know anyone who actually talked about it really much so 
Hopefully that was a great success. Also at the end of October, Sony released the A7C. Is this C is for compact? Is it for colors? Is it for cheap? You've guessed it. Go below to see. Now November, which is close to now, DJI released the Mini 2. It has the same sensor, but actually can make 4K on it. And it can fly faster, which is very useful against wind. Also, it has a better communication system, so you can actually, the range will be better and the quality of the signal will be better at the same distance from the first one. You can check out Potato Jet, he did a great video on it. Also in November, AMD released the 5000 series chip, which, just like the other ones, compete directly with Intel. And this time, those chips are awesome. And they crush the competition, wherever competition you're talking about. There's just one problem. You can't buy them because they are really, really good and everyone wants to buy them. And combine that with the 2020 event, well, everyone is home, so everyone wants to upgrade their PC. And it's printed by TSMC. So we're gonna add that to the pile right here. Also in November, Apple released the iPhone 12. All flavors with now 5G and that's it. There's, there's just 5G more. All the rest is the same. Check out the comparison with Max Tech below. About the mid-November, Microsoft released the Xbox Series X and the Xbox Series S at the same time. So everyone knows what Xbox is, but do you know the internals? What's inside? Well, it's actually AMD who created custom chips for the processors and for the graphic cards. But wait a second, isn't that the same AMD that was before in the news? Yeah. And where are they printing their stuff? At TSMC. So we'll just add that to the PAL. That PAL is beginning to be pretty high. Pretty much the same day, AMD announced the Radeon 6000 series, which are graphic cards which compete with Nvidia. They're not exactly as fast, but cost less. And for example, they don't have RTX, which is ray tracing. So you get a little bit less eye candy. And those Vita cards also, you can't find them because where are those processors of those video cards printed? You've guessed it, TSMC. We'll add that to the PAL also. Also at the mid-November, Apple released new Apple machines, laptops, Air stuff, MacBook Air, <laughs> and Mac Pros with the M1 chip. It's a different chip, it's not coming from Intel, it's a different thing. There are some good videos out there comparing the Mac to other Macs with Intel chips. So they are kind of comparing apples to apples. Apple people, you've been stuck in the past with Intel, unfortunately. With AMD, that's not really a problem because we went beyond and Intel is kind of still living in the past and I would say they are about three years behind in terms of technology. So when you compare apples to apples, it's actually awesome because you get way more performance. But when you compare with AMD processors, things get a little bit how could I say that? <laughs> well, just look the Linux tech tip videos in the comments below. And on another note, where is Apple new chip printed? You've guessed it, TSMC. Oh, that pile is beginning to be pretty big. But that is actually pretty cool for Apple people. You will now taste better power. And in the long run, you'll only get better performance per watt. At the end of November, the competition is coming. The PlayStation 5 is out. Or is it? Did you actually put your hand on it? Because these things are very rare. So the PS5 or PlayStation from Sony 5, well, guess who's printing the chips? Yeah, 
TSMC, again, because those chips are custom made by AMD. For your filmmakers, at the end of November, Sony released the FX6. Although that Philip Blooms released the title A Most Confusing Camera, he made a mini movie about it, uh, two hours only. No, I think this one is 45 minutes. That's the shortest thing he ever made. Also at the end of November, Canon released the C70 cinema camera, a more compact version of everything. So all companies are actually releasing more compact versions of their bigger cinema cameras. Red, Sony, Canon, who else is left? They're all all done actually did a great video. Check it out. Also at the end of November, Blackmagic Design DaVinci Resolve 17 Beta was released to the public. Beta 1. If you are in a production environment, don't update yet. Although that the Beta 3 is quite more stable, there's still a few quinks and things to fix. So I'm gonna go edit this video on it, but, <laughs> but don't do it. And on December 15, Skylum will release Luminar AI version 1. It should release. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to edit this video before the release or not and publish it. And I'm gonna test it. I'm gonna compare with 4. So subscribe and hit that bell icon. Again, at the end of 2020, Nikon should release the Z6 and the Z7. Of course, there were so many much more things this year, but I wanted to fit it as a short video. <laughs> I don't know if I succeeded with that. So what's happening with all of this? They can print so much. Everyone is jumping in the cake. That is why you can't really find the new chips or the new cards. Well, they are building a new foundry, but it won't be ready for next year. Also included some links below in the link section below. For example, Canon just doesn't know how to dissipate heat. And the video about this guy, do it yourself perks. There's also the link for DaVinci Resolve if you want to try it out. Not in a production environment. Hopefully you like this video guys. And if you really liked it, I might do it next year. See you in the next video. In January, Leica actually released the M50, wait, <laughs> 17 yellow, 17. Let's do that again. Let's do that again. Again. Let's do that again. The original post in their forums as, I mean, blah, blah, blah. Uh. <laughs> Olympus finally quit. The camera quits, quits again. In August, it's actually Roger Sikala. Uh, Sikala? Yeah. In August, Roger Silaka from Lance Rental. Let's do that again. At the end of August, Roger Silaka. Sikala. Sikala. Okay, let's do that again. <laughs> Sorry for your budgeting your name, uh, Roger. Sikala. 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 Concentrate, concentrate. Also in mid-November, Apple released, uh, what did they release? <laughs> oh yeah, okay. I need to read, how did I wrote that? At the end of the month, also at the end of the <laughs> Also at the end of November, no, 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 no. <laughs> let's do that again. Zed, uh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs>